for me, I, I've, the lesson I've learned is I'm gonna leave it to the experts. I'm gonna do things I'm good at, the things I know I can make money at right yeah. now. And then if I have more time later on, if this doesn't take up so much my attention, I can kind of try to figure that out later. But first things first. So thanks for joining this week on the Elite Sales Podcast. I'm joined in studio, Jamal Beard. How you doing? Molly Mall. All right. Right <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we got John back around, co-host. We got, How are you doing? We got Bryce, uh, producer. Oh, we can see his hand now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we got a couple of guests that we're going to be bringing on. So today what we're going to be talking about is talking about kind of changing things a little bit. So um, I, I read a quote this morning. The quote, the quote said, chain, a, a chain, but, I don't want to butcher it. It's not that long, but and I just looked at it. Mm. I got one from uh, that Atomic Habits book. Let's hear yours. It's confusing. If you don't change anything, nothing changes. <laughs> Something like that. It's not right. that confusing. <laughs> no, I think I butchered it. The way I, I rephrased it. Well, I mean, there's, I mean, a lot of people say nothing changes if you don't change, right? Right. Yeah. So generally, that's true. Um, but this this quote one up you. A yep. pivot is a change in strategy, not vision. Mm. Right. So yeah, we you know we we had a bunch of calls earlier this morning. We we're talking about just making making changes along the way to kind of improve your business. Yeah. You took a little step away for a little bit, and now you came back. I mean, you're doing everything the same. You're doing things a little different. Uh, I'm doing things a little differently now. Yeah. So I've I've got new new lead vendors, and um, you know, just attacking it a little differently now. Oh. Absolutely. Was there something that necessitated the change or is it? What do you mean? I mean, like, was it, was it a, are you like expecting better results? Are you, do you see something, some deficiencies in your business before that you? Uh, yeah, it was mainly a lot of it was uh, just, uh, you know, get on the phone and calling and making calls and making sure that you, I had that activity going. You know, I had some personal issues, obviously, that took me away from the business for a while, but, mm. you know, and now coming back, you know, I'm, I'm starting to see it's going to take that major effort to put it in. It's good to have you back. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good to be back. We were talking a couple of agents earlier today, John. We we're talking yeah. about, yeah, I mean, they've, they've hit some obstacles. They've built, they've kind of ran into some challenges. Some of them self-imposed, some of it just kind of just not understanding the business as well, or having, having a faulty plan or having a plan that just wasn't mm -hmm. optimal. Yeah. So what, what were some of the changes that we, yeah. So along with that, and along with our, our topics earlier before too, um, from our Q and a call, you really want to inspect your business. Um, and it's either something that changed psychologically or something that changed in your process, right? And it, wherever you're at in your business, you know, you could be a top agent one day and then next thing you know, you slacked off or you stopped dialing or you, or you got too, you had too many vacations. And next thing you know, your business went down. Well, what changed? Was it the system or was it you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you want to change if you were having a great um success with some lead vendor and now you got to pivot to another vendor because that lead vendor couldn't scale uh everyone talked great about it everyone started buying leads from that one vendor and now they they lowered their quality you got to pivot so right. you you really want to be able to, to just um as an individual inspect where you're at into your business but ideally it all just comes down to your leads and how many people are you, are you talking to how many presentations are you having how many sales are you having yeah, and then we, and we also we were talking on the Q and A. We we're talking about like if the agent's doing well, and all of a sudden they start their their numbers drop, their performance drops. Like we're we're talking about like what are the main things that we want to look at? And I said universally, it's going to be how many presentations you're doing, how much you're spending in leads, mm. how many people you're talking to. Right. Really, what it comes down to. So a lot of times that that's kind of dropped off. And you know we we looked into a couple of different factors. Like the first thing for me on a personal level for most people, if they say like. I can't sell anymore. It's like my numbers are going down. I need to like things have changed. And I'm always like, okay, so what's changed in your personal life? Mm -hmm. What's changed in your personal situation? What's changed in your financial situation? Like, are you doing the same things? And then, you know, we, <laughs> we've also come to the conclusion over experience over all these years. A lot of times, you know, people, if you, unless you've had long-term sustained success, because, you know, if you come in, you purchase a lot of leads, talk to a lot of people, you can, you can have a great start to the, to the business. Yes. Sometimes there's a little bit of a learning curve, but overall, like people, you've seen people come and just kill it right out the gate, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes that's a good thing, but sometimes it's a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's a bad thing because sometimes people get a little cocky and they yeah. just think like, I don't need to call as much because I'm such a great closer. I don't need to buy as many leads because I'm so awesome at this business. <laughs> and the thing is like, yeah, you, you were able to get some results and you know, no, like that credit goes to you. But the thing is you also haven't been through the challenges yet. Mm-hmm. You haven't, you haven't, it's like, this is a long game, right? So like, you know, having, having short-term success doesn't mean that you're going to be a successful person. That is something that you're going to ride out the highs and lows throughout the process. And then overall, if you can do the sustained period of time, you, you get punched in the mouth, you keep coming back and you get to the point where you have long-term success, you're a successful person. Yeah. And that's sometimes the, the, that change or a good or a bad change, you know, going back to Jamal. Okay. So you have to take a step out, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's a good reflection too, to figure out, okay, you know, what, what was I successful? What brought me down? Mm-hmm. And now when you're ready to come back, okay, well now I know what to eliminate. I know what to, to strengthen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it gives you the confidence to be more consistent. Um, you know, sometimes when you, like, like he says, coming in and that was one of my stories, having some immediate success and, thinking that it was going to be a lot, you know, easier than it, than it became. You start getting charged backs and you start, things start happening in your personal life. And you start to think like, you know, maybe I made a different decision. I went into other businesses, start doing other things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, after a while, it's like, you, you start to realize that, you know, in order to be successful, you do have to be consistent and um, consistent in, in, in one area. And, and, you know, we're all, we're all human. So we just kind of naturally go through these, these thoughts because I mean the thing I remember when I made my first when when I first started the business that one day I I helped four families yeah 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 you you all you can put you can edit this in post if you need to but (laughs) I made four thousand bucks and I just I just thought to myself oh this is this is this is a really cool thing like if I if I continue this every single day and I work 52 weeks in a year and I make like I'm gonna make like five hundred thousand change right every day is a success story right it's a (laughs) no-brainer I didn't do anything crazy but the thing is it's the it's the process of being consistent and doing your dials, making your appointments, you know, seeing enough people, yeah. going to work when you don't feel like it, mm-hmm. going, to, going to work when you're do, going through personal stuff, like putting all that aside, and that thing is there's going to be ebbs and flows in the business. And Yeah, man. Sometimes a big, big sale really messes up with your psyche, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially when you got one client or a husband and wife, and then you made a big amount of money and you're thinking, oh, this is all I need. Right. Yeah. I need these big sales. I don't have to do all the dials. And then you start getting mad when you have like a, a $30 sale, $40 sale, right? right? So as long as you're staying consistent and you have your systems in place, your lead systems, your, your dialing systems, these results will continue to pay off for you. And you're right. I think a lot of people don't think about the chargebacks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't think about it earlier, especially when you first start. But as far as managing them and things of that nature, you start to learn as long as, you know, as you go, obviously. So, um, yeah, that's what, those are one of the things, those are some of the challenges that I face, but I'm all starting to see that, like we said, we, you have to manage those leads right along with your time and your, and, and your, and your, um, and your consistency. Yep. Definitely. Those are things that'll help you a lot. So I'm glad to be back. Definitely glad to be with you guys. We're going to make it better than ever, right? Absolutely. All right. I'm there. Every day. Uh, Julian, can you unmute real quick before we get to Celine? Yes, sir. What's up? All right, so you know we had a we had a little bit of a uh, a little pre conference here before before we started rolling here, and uh, yeah. you you've been, you've been sharing with the group. So you you number one, your social media has been awesome. You've been putting out a lot of great content, really helpful content that people people that are in our business make sense to them. People that are in this industry make sense to them, and you have people in different industries kind of generally looking in, and they've kind of noticed you, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, I'm. Sh- if you guys don't know, I, I'm pretty heavy on my social media, um, mainly Instagram, just putting stuff out for life insurance education, or even anyone that's in our industry to help us sell or, um, you know, get you a sale, hopefully, and also um, just sales in general, like regardless of life insurance. So um, I had a, a person reach out to me in uh, uh, was a very generous person reached out to me on Instagram, it was actually a friend of mine that I haven't talked to for over 10 years. And uh, basically, they just wanted to thank me and uh, let me know that they appreciate the content I was putting out because it helped inspire their campaigns that they create. And, you know, after asking a couple of questions, I found out that they do uh, digital marketing, they do uh, funnels and Facebook ads for businesses and some of their clients do life insurance. So basically, he had a client that threw a whole bunch of money at the wall trying to get into life insurance, hired VAs, got a whole bunch of leads and did nothing with it. 
So um, he generously uh, sent me 600 leads just as a thank you for um, inspiring those ad campaigns. And of course he got paid from the client, you know, that's, that's money he gets. So he's basically sitting on these leads. He's not a life insurance agent. And uh, I've actually been converting these leads. Now they're high intent. Um, wow. They're, you know, they're, they're pretty, I would say they're pretty fresh as far as um, the oldest I've seen is from January or February, but there's no contacts on them, you know, maybe one or two contacts on them. And the contacts are voicemail, right? The, like they haven't talked to these people. And uh, the uh, the ad is for um, state approved burial insurance. So final expense leads, pretty solid stuff, man. So, um, and all across the United States. So it's been uh, a, a good uh, confirmation that putting out free value has a uh, karmic payback. So uh, mm. all the free stuff that I've been doing on Instagram, all this value that I provide, it's good to know that I got compensated for it. But uh, I do plan on working with this um, this person and hopefully they'll, well, basically what he said is if we can use your content with literally your face and the videos you make, the the conversion is going to be even higher. So I was like, oh man, great, let's work. So I'm going to use all of the commissions that I make from his leads and I'm just going to feed them into his funnel. That's awesome. We, we yeah. joked a little bit off air earlier because you were like, you know, he gave me these leads. He wasn't even pitching me. And I'm like, we're so maybe he was. Thing, right? <laughs> That's what he said to He's like, I promise this wasn't a pitch. And I'm like, hmm, did he just close the closer? Like, right. like damn, did said, I just get closed? And he said, yeah, so my client page. So uh, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so for my services. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, what it's mainly your, your highest, um, bill is how much money you're putting towards ads right. you know so there's a person that they, you have someone on retainer right but you got to pay money to facebook you know they they cost to, to push your stuff out there so towards that and didn't really sell anything Jeez. Uh, yeah so go ahead. i was just saying like for for anybody that doesn't know how like you know these search engine optimization these marketings and how they work anyone and everyone can do it that's not the secret. The secret sauce is managing it, right? There's two, two factors. You create the content, you put out the, the ad spend. Basically, you're paying Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever else you want to do it. You're paying them daily to, to advertise. But what do you do with the advertising? What do you do with the people that's coming in? So that's where the, the manager comes in. If you do it all your own, then how do you manage if you're selling and you're, you're checking your ads, you're checking the funnels, you're checking when to put it out, when to put it out, put it off, um, because every time it's on, you're paying for it, right? And then you, you got the whole United States, where to broadcast it. So that's where these guys are. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of vendors, but they have their own specialties. And then it's a hit and miss sometimes, right? The algorithm keeps changing too. So the thing is, you have to actively manage it. You can't just be like, turn this on and it's going to put money into it and just it's going to keep running right it doesn't work in business in general yeah so this is where he julian's saying like that this guy threw but i mean i should have got 600 leads they just didn't sell it no. so yeah. when, when you knew this buddy long a while back was he in marketing back then no no he wasn't in marketing i wasn't in, i wasn't in insurance obviously either so we just have always kept in touch from a distance you know just like a distant facebook friends or instagram friends but um it's just weird how that worked out, you know, and I'm grateful for sure. Like, I mean, I don't have to work with them. I could just run off with it, but right. Right. You no, know, I mean, it looks like it's a, um, a fruitful relationship at this point. Well, I mean, it's funny. I mean, I think, I think for a lot of, a lot of successful, like people that we, we read about, we listen to podcasts on, we watch their documentaries, all this stuff. A lot of them do preach. You got to put in that, put in, do, do the work for free. Yeah. If you want to learn from people that are doing better than you, you want to learn from something that has value that, that that can be offered to you. Just do a lot of free work. And the thing is like, don't, don't go and be like, how much are you going to pay me? Mm -hmm. What do I get out of this? Cause the thing is they're not going to be willing to give you that, that same type of value. Cause yeah. it's transactional. Right. And then they always talk about, I got lucky. Like would Julian say he got lucky or his efforts and work got compensated for it. Mm. But most of the time, these successful people will always say, because of this, I lucked out into this. And it's, it's part of the business, man. That's congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Now, one of the biggest things he said too was, and you know, you mentioned it's two parts for him. What he said was you can have great marketing, but if they got nowhere to go, it's, it's nothing's going to happen. As far as like, if it takes two, you got to have a strong sales system and then a strong marketing because they can market all they want and they can get you all these leads. But if there's nowhere to go, 
then it's just not going to work out. If no one's going to sell them, if no one's going to call them, right? If you're not going to do the revenue generating activity, it's just nothing's going to happen with it. So it does take two parts. It's definitely synergy. So he was basically, maybe he was scouting me. I don't know because because <laughs> he, what he said at the end was, you know, um, this only works for me if it works for you. And I guess it wasn't working for the other person. So it's very interesting. Yeah, that's smooth, smooth technique. I'm thinking too, right? I'm thinking like, all right, if this this agent, he's got to have tried to get some return of investment, right? Unless he resold the leads to you or, or pre reprovided to you to see if you do something. Which is which is okay because the thing that's is, his pivot. Maybe he's good at marketing, but he sucks at selling. Right. Yeah. Or maybe he's good at marketing, but he's inexperienced at selling. Yeah. So you can still find value out of that. I, I've worked them less than a week. I think my the first day I worked them was either Friday or Saturday, maybe Saturday. You know, they're they're pretty good. A free, huh? free, 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 free. Yeah, 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 yeah. Off the free, you know, and nice. uh, yeah. What's off your yeah. intro, you're off of your introductory pack? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every every lead vendor should take notes. Every lead vendor should give, give introductory packs. <laughs> well, no, th th this is this is the thing. The whole subscription model works. The whole trial, free trial subscription. Yeah. That thing always works because the thing is people don't want to start for something brand new. It's like, it's like, Oh, I got to pay money. No, I'm good. I'll hold off. But if you give it to them for free, they sign up and the, it's that concept of I'm taking away from you now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I'm taking away from you, unless you pay, most people be like, well, I already have it. So I don't want to lose it now. So it's part of the human psychology. Yeah. And plus the success story. Right. Right. Yeah, so a lot of people, I mean, like, especially with like agents, right. What is the number one concern for a brand new agent when they, they're thinking about buying leads? They don't know if it'll work out. But if you got the free leads and you see that it's working out, okay, now you're in. I might buy some more. Absolutely. G gave Julian a taste. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> kind of like, like a drug dealer. <laughs> free trial. <laughs> well, are, is he, is he going to use your content for his general ads or just for your specific? No, 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 no. Well, that if, if we do it, he would use my content for our ad or for our ads, yes, like basically for my, for my leads. So branded leads, right. Branded content kind of How much does he charge. Um, his retainer is about a month. Uh, oh, and yeah. it's a setup just for the funnel and all the systems. And then you just got to throw money at the, uh, at ads. the ads. And, yeah. No, oh. I mean, I mean, we're, we're, I'm still feeling the leads out. So we'll see what happens, you know, off of this first week to put up, just from his, I'm, I'm happy with him. Like, dang, if, if we can just, uh, and I don't have a, a, a funnel, right. I'm literally just have, I have just a spreadsheet air table, or it's like a spreadsheet. Um, you know, that's how I'm using it. I'm using it through my, um, go high level or turbo text, but I don't have like a funnel of auto responses and triggers and things like that. Cause if we have that, the efficiency levels through the roof, I mean, I'm just really talking to people right now. I'm chasing them down to get on the phone. That's taken up most of the time. Um, cause I'm feeling out, you know, they're, they're all over the country. So I'm really just changing, getting new phone numbers and whatnot. You know, I have different licenses, but, um, when I do have a funnel, that efficiency level is going to be through the, through the roof, you know? So really awesome. Most of the guys that are, that are doing really well in our live dials, they, they have similar type of campaign set up. Yep. Somewhat, they, they pay someone a retainer fee. They manage their account, generate leads for them. They, they have a certain amount of ad spend every single month, whatever comes in, comes in. So if it comes in with. 200 leads, if it comes up with 300 leads, 400 leads, whatever the ad spend is able to get you. Mm. And you know, that, then that's something that you work with on that, that particular lead vendor, manager, or whoever, whatever you want to label that person. So the thing is, if they're not providing you the results, then it's move on. on. Yeah. yeah. But for anyone else that are listening uh, or interested in it, it does cost money. Because mm -hmm. so this, this is where the difference between your own individual, you know, lead being brought in versus like the ILC or other lead vendors. These managers charge their price. That's all it is, right? From how much it is or, or a consistent basis. If you do your own, the real benefit of it is that it, it starts getting optimized. The algo gets better and your lead costs will go down uh, sooner or later, right? right. So, but it, it requires work because you do got to put help and then you got to put in the work to get those return of investment. Uh, but soon enough, what we're starting to find out some, some agents are spending about at the end of it, like eight to $10 per lead which does get cheaper. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess that would depend on how many leads you get, you know, right. the more you get the cheaper it will be. Um, but one thing I wanted to say is, and the reason I went this route is, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do still buy 
uh, leads from the Integrity Lead Center. I mean, I just got a free, you know, right, John? We got free shouts out to yeah. the sales conference, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, Albert. No, but um, I got it. I was second row. Did Why you get it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, because he caught the mic. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. my bad. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> um, but uh, either way, you know, when I'm looking at the people that have become successful, right? You're looking at this branded content, you know, there's like the Eric Elevated or the Prince Donnells or the people that have like their branded content. I know that I have a demographic and I'm pretty well spoken on my Instagram. So I'm like, man, maybe I should, you know, take a page from that. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but your evaluation for integrity goes up if you have a lead gen attached. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. I mean, it's far more scalable. It's, it's more predictable. Mm. Yeah. You, you come into, you know, into that meeting and you got a lead gen attached to your agency and you're still doing those numbers. I, you know, I mean, that's the the route, you know, I, I just know where I see myself. So, um, yeah. Yeah. You always want to build a sellable business, whatever, whatever it may contain the thing. But the thing is, the whole point of this is if you guys are unfamiliar with it and be like, Hey, I could generate my own leads. And then, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to how learn how to, to start my own campaign and generate my own leads. Fine. You can go ahead and do that. But the thing is, if you need to make money short term, yeah. you won't have time to do both because yeah. Yeah. there's going to be the learning curve is going to be ups and downs. So yeah. yeah, scale it accordingly, please. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we've had some agents that have made mistakes where they were like on their own doing their own thing. And then they were like spending per day to try to get a lead generation. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, it would get like overspending on it, yeah. overspending, barely getting any clients and low intent clients. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> well, I started it for a little bit. Cause I was just thinking like, why don't I generate among leads? I'm reasonably smart person yeah and i was like generating leads for like some of them were like as low as like two bucks i mean i didn't sell any of them but <laughs> but they were cheap it's so like it's a little deceiving sometimes so the thing is for me i, I the lesson i've learned is i'm gonna leave it to the experts i'm gonna do things i'm good at the things i know i can make money at right yeah. now and then if i have more time later on if this doesn't take up so much my attention i can kind of try to figure that out later but first things first yeah. i always gotta try to focus on whatever i need to focus on yeah. But real quick, before we let you go and bring on Celine, uh, you were at the sales conference. You flew all the way out here from Florida. We didn't get a chance to hear your thoughts on the uh, event yet. Oh, yeah. No, I I loved it. Um, first off, just being in California was cool for me. I know everyone's like, you know, I hear everyone's just kind of talking, just so you guys know, outside of Cali, just people talk so much shit about Cali, you know. Um, oh, we know. They, it's justified. Or, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, even when I came back, people were like, oh, was it like as bad as literally someone yesterday was like, oh, yeah, was it a shithole when you went? And I was like, no, I actually really enjoyed my time. It was pretty awesome. I enjoyed everywhere I went. I know the places to go. I know the places to eat and the people that I was out there with, including, you know, my leadership team and my peers. But as far as the, um, the conference, um, I thought it was awesome. I took a ton of notes and then I came back and I do my own mastermind meeting for my team. And I use those notes for my meeting because I, I learned there. Um, it was really good to uh, get the experience of talking uh, on that level with people. Because for those that don't know that were there, I've never really talked to a bigger group like that outside of my own team. Um, so it was good to get really good feedback and respect from people that are up in the industry to tell me that I did well. And then um, also to hear other great speakers uh, at arm's length like um dave anderson like you know of course sean mike um so that was really cool and then obviously you know hanging out at top golf was always fun yeah. but uh but the sales conference i learned a lot definitely um i think one of my the biggest ones i liked was about annuities you know i'm really trying to step up my game i've been in insurance for a while so or well you know two three years and it's mainly just been about insurance and you know about final expense and um you know mortgage protection but now i'm trying to elevate to at least advanced market srs you know kind of make sure i find the money and uh coronado really left an impact on me like yo like there, there's so much more out there so that was a, a one big takeaway for me was uh i need to step that annuity game up for sure shout out coronado yeah he yeah. just sold he sold he one sold today uh, yesterday or today yeah yeah nice so yeah. i mean you Sorry. What, one, no, one thing um, I told my team and, I, and I'm telling my agents is, and this is something I believe in, is, is a student of sales. And that's a forever student, you know, and the reason I continue to get better and the reason I continue to sell is because I'm always striving to learn, always. And um, I, I 
basically told my guys that if you can get yourself in a position to be around people that have more experience, made more money, and they're willing to pour into you and free, <laughs> you know, then do that. You know, even though you, sometimes you may have to pay for a conference or a convention or go fly somewhere, whatever it is. But if you can put yourself in those rooms, then you, the investment, of course, is going to obviously be you getting better, learning something. And sometimes even at as you've been in the industry a while, you hear it and you know it, but you're being refreshed on it. It's like, I think um, I heard John say this maybe in one of the clips that you guys had from when you did your uh, overview of the conference. And it's like, am I doing that? Uh, am I doing, am I putting those into use? Right. Am I like actually uh, doing the stuff that I learned in, in these conferences? Because, you know, theory, you're really only learning from like this much of like theory and books, you know, and it's really all about practice and how much of that are you doing? So um, yeah, I was really grateful to be there um, to be able to speak and to learn for sure. Cool. Well, your training was awesome up there. I, I was pretty surprised that that was your first time training a group that size. Cause thank you. Seemed like a real natural. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I appreciate you coming on and sharing a little bit. I mean, that that's a really cool story about about um providing that free value, you know, with your content, and then you got the tables was, was kind of turned. Someone provided you free value, and it led to some some other additional value. So keep us posted on that. We'd love to hear more about it. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Julian. Celine, are you are you on with us? Yes, I'm right here. Awesome. awesome. Well, first of all, I appreciate you coming on and, and joining us, you know, been wanting to talk to you because uh, before we get into all that, I mean, why don't you give us a little introduction about yourself, how long you've been with FL, uh, you know, uh, how's your experience been so far? Give us a rundown. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys inviting me on here today. I really dream of being on here and really sharing everything. Um, I'd say I've been with FFL for three years, but, you know, like, like, like uh, Jamal, is this right here? Mm -hmm. That's sitting in the middle? Yeah. 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 That's your name? Okay, yeah. Um, like, you know, ups and downs in life, you know, kind of like, you got to find that balance and, you know, like, present yourself in a more business mind. So I'd say for the serious part of being with FFL, I've been with it for a month. And in the first week of really taking it serious, really using integrity only, really dialing in, really taking the time to follow through with all the advice on the podcast. I mean, I've had success in the first day. I, with one lead, I had three sales wow. and that was like a $3,000 day. Um, if I were to do that consistently, I'd be a billionaire. So that's <laughs> the goal. <laughs> um, I mean, I just can't tell you how much you have to really, like you said, pivot. You have to really adapt and get functional with what you're attempting to accomplish. It's not about, well, this has to fit into my lifestyle. It's about how integrity has already has the marketing plan set out ready for you to use it doesn't take anything else but setting that schedule having a routine in the morning waking up getting on your dials setting appointments and just taking those no's and getting over it like and just buying new leads as much as you can like really taking that money and investing in it so that's a little bit about my experience with ffl uh, I didn't start off easy. I had a lot of things to overcome um, personally, but um, I'm 26. I'm in Tucson, Arizona. I buy leads in Tucson only in the Pima County area. They are wow. absolutely phenomenal. Like, I can't tell you, each person I meet, they are ready. They are willing. They were looking for the product. They put it in order. They remembered it. A lot of people I've recognized that I talk to and get angry with me over the phone is because they either just had a really bad situation happen in their family, or they lost somebody, they're going through a financial issue, and they're just scared of being unaccepted or getting lowballed. And you have to really bring that clarity to them through integrity leads. Like I've been with AWL and I'm going to be honest with you. I, I just don't, I so, just don't like AWL. The, 
So just hope you're enjoying the video so far. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, anything to help us help support the algorithm so we can continue to bring you more valuable content and continue to be part of your lives. Also, if you don't feel that it's providing you that much support since you're already at this point, like and subscribe anyway. Just to give a little context. I mean, AWO is one of the live transfer vendors. So there's 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 different types of for those that are that are newer on here. We obviously we have leads that are generated on the internet. There's direct mail. There's age leads. There's um, am I missing some live transfers? Mm -hmm. The, the, the social media campaigns like Julian just just shared yeah, about a bunch of them. Bang uh, bang, bang lead realists, happy agents, <laughs> and. A lead is a lead is a lead is a lead. I mean, so the, so the things that part of the reason why I wanted to have Celine on today, we we've been talking recently because you know when you're in home you have you have some questions you'll call me, um, and then we you know you start you start talking about live transfers, and then and then you're like, I'm not really I'm not really feeling these Al, and I'm like <laughs> you know these these are not really for me and they're like, and they're they're pretty costly right. They're sixty five dollars yeah. to talk to somebody that is not going to ever get qualified with anything. They're and they think they're just talking to somebody for free. They're just like, oh, well, I just wanted to get a quote. And I'm just like, there has to be a better method with live transfers than charging me to talk to somebody that knows they're not going to get accepted, knows they called in four times today to talk to four different people to think that they're going to get bypassed through a system. Like, I just, I just don't ever want to leave integrity. I can't tell you that how, how grateful I am that I know I will be successful just off of integrity leads alone, just off of integrity. I don't need any other, I'll be honest with you, happy leads are pretty good. When I first started happy leads, those were, those were some good leads, but there is <laughs> nothing like an integrity lead. I mean, you call, you show up, they'll tell you everything. They're in person. They want to, they want to see who you are. They want to get to know you. Like, my last lead, he was a veteran in the army. He got like four purple hearts. He was special forces. He knew my dad and they were in Washington and now we're in Tucson. So like, that was really cool. But um, he told me more about my dad than I knew about my dad. That was like, <laughs> whoa, you know? So that so was a lay down sale. Cool the, right? That was like, that was like stamp of approval. We know your dad. You're good. You're golden. He was he was gonna spend four hundred dollars a month on wow. two hundred and fifty thousand dollars just because he likes me. I mean, these leads are very legitimate. And uh, but he's invited me to go frog hunting with him. He's like, we should go catch frogs <laughs> next month. I'm like, okay, bullfrog hunting. You know, made a friend. But I I can't tell you guys just if you focus on integrity. You could beat me because I'm I'm taking off. I, it's just like, you know, I'm 26. I'm always by myself. You know, I, I've been through a lot. So like, I'll, like Al said, you know, I made 4,000 and I got excited. got a little cocky. But when I get back running, it's like, oh, take, I buy all the, I bought all the leads in Tucson. So now I'm trying to get into a rental situation where I can rent a car and go up to Phoenix and uh, start doing some. Now I get in Phoenix, in Phoenix, Arizona. Woo! I'm going to be doing some good sales. And well, if we, if we could back up a second. First of all, I, lo I love the enthusiasm, Celine. I, I, I love hearing how excited you are about these leads. Because, you know, the interesting interesting is for, for some people, they're like, I'm only going to do live transfers. I, I, I don't want to sit around and dial. I just want to work those ones. Yeah. There's other people that say, I'm going to use these social media campaign ones. I'm just, just going to use these these ones. Some people are like, I'm, I'm just going to use the Integrity Lead Center ones. <laughs> So people like the happy leads or whatever, whatever, all these different vendors, there's tons of them out there. And the thing is for all the people, all the people that love particular brands or vendors or, or types of leads, there's other people that hate just it. as much hate them <laughs> yeah. on, on the other, on the other, <laughs> other. And then, so like your situation, it's, it's reversed for a lot of people. So that's why I thought it was like a really interesting comment that you brought up yesterday. So what, what type of leads do you buy off of the integrity lead center? Like new ones, age ones, mailers, or what do you, what's your composition? aged internet like the mm -hmm. aged internet leads so the 30 to 90 30 to 90 days because they don't get a lot of dials any like currently they're not currently getting dialed a lot so they're not like like i have some people call me back like i just had a i just had a, a, a lead call me back right now and i would tell her oh i'm in a meeting right now she's like oh no problem go ahead and give me a call back i'd love to talk to you i'm like wow that's that's amazing 
because probably nobody's reached out to her in 60 to 90 days. And she's like, something probably has happened in her life where she needs that reassurance. Like, Hey, look, I didn't take this opportunity in the 30 days that somebody called me a while ago, but now it's been 60 to 90 days. I've been sitting waiting for somebody to get back to me. So I think those are called the gold. So I do gold and the reason I did the titanium, but those ones weren't as powerful as the 60 to 90 day ones. Those ones were like, everyone was answering the phone. Everyone was setting appointments. I had a booked week. I don't want to get an integrity deal. I thought they were trying to buy the business. Now I know they're trying to partner with you. I was like, you can partner with me. <laughs> um, that's the deal. See, because if you're focused on building with other vendors, you're missing the point of being with FFL. FFL is partnered with integrity. So you're trying to implement Sean Mike and his business model. And that's to get the integrity deal. Like, don't ever let that partnership leave your mind. Like, they have people going all over the states, doing presentations, teaching people about the business model, teaching them about how powerful the leads are. Like, if somebody's saying, hey, I already direct mailed this person for you. We've already done the system for eight years. I'm, I'm in my head thinking, why would I go to somebody that's, like, okay, I, was, I, I have a job where I can sit and talk to people. I'm going to go pivot a little bit. Um, I sit and talk to people. And they were presenting to me that they're a marketing group and they wanted me to market for them. I said, no, 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 no. I need you to market for me because I have a life insurance company and I need you to share my business with people and I need new leads. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I wasted, I think, a $1,000 a day talking about getting a new marketing group when I could have made a thousand dollars and then took that thousand and put it into integrity. So I will never do that again. I just don't want to work with nobody but integrity because they are solid leads. They are very, they don't cheat people into getting information. They tell them straight up. If you want to figure out what you qualify for with life insurance, you need to sit with somebody and talk with them. It's not, Oh, you're going to get a hundred thousand dollars for $15 a month. Like you talk to people like that, they're going to hang up the phone. But if you talk to somebody that's like, let's see what you're qualified for. They're going to be like, okay, let's see, let's sit down, set an appointment and see what I can get. That's more inviting. And that's what integrity does. And that's why I love them. And I want an integrity. Deal. Let that be known. I'm awesome. Going to every convention, I'm getting an integrity deal. <laughs> oh, well, I, lo I, I love to hear that. So, so, so the thing is, you, you've, uh, you've had ups and downs in this business, right? It's, I mean, for as enthusiastic as you are here, as, as up, up, uh, upbeat and, and cheerful as you are, you've had some difficult stretches throughout and there's certain vendors that didn't work out for you also, right? So it's not just like, you're just not like, hey, I, I love everything about the business. It's, these are just working for me right now. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, whatever I've shared in the past, mm -hmm. it wasn't ever the marketing system. It was my personal business model that I failed to adapt to. So when we do things in life that don't allow us that integrity, don't allow us the truth or to be in the moment, right? To really value and appreciate the moment. It could be anything. It could be partying too much. It could be hanging out with the wrong people. It could be smoking too much weed, which I don't ever touch in my whole life in existence ever again that stuff will get in the way of your marketing campaign. So you have to let go of things to get closer to what you really desire. And to me, that's a successful business that's building with profitable people, making a lot of money. I'm not going to lie. I'm motivated by money and serving people. I really love, like I will get rid of bad habits that I've done in the past just to be able to sit down with somebody's family and say, I can give you guys a stakehold in your life with this company if you qualify. That is a transition I am ready and willing to transform into because I value integrity and I value family first life that, that dear, that much. Okay. Well, so also for live transfers, obviously, you know, those are incoming and you do those from home. You know, do you when you purchase these integrity lead center leads, are you going out in person specifically? Do you is that your goal to do so, or, or are you doing some virtually or over telesales? 
Well, um, the first three, I, four I did were in person. I set an appointment and I went to their house. The, the first three, the last one of the three that I did was a renal kidney uh, renal situation. And that's where I had to call you and ask you about it. So my AIG wasn't set up all the way, but I drove out to her six times. Now I'm wow. going to tell you about this appointment. It was at 6.30, right? And I had gotten a flat tire on the highway. I did not care. I was in a Barbie dress. I was in high heels. And I saw how to get to her house through the, through the trenches, right? Like when they say this is field work, this is field underwriting. <laughs> I literally parked my car off the side of the highway, went through trenches in high heels, penny heels, went down slopes of sharp rocks, went over two sets of train tracks, walked on desert dirt, got to this road called Adonis Road. He picked me up on the corner of the road, which was like two minutes from his house, picked me up. And I said, I would walk two miles to not miss this appointment because I know you're looking to make sure that people that are taking care of you aren't gonna be financially responsible for your end stage life situation. And I value you and I appreciate that. And I'm here to serve you. I don't care how many times I have to come back. I appreciate you picking up the phone, sitting with me, opening up about your conditions and seeking to get responsibility and accountability for your, your, your health and your end stage life. Thank you so much for choosing me to do business with you. I felt like I felt like that was my moment of integrity and I just, I want it. Like I want it. And then the next one was pretty cool was because good. we went to Top Golf. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that was good. Yeah, so I heard that. That was a great one. That guy was really funny. He was just like, you know, like, he was just really funny. I don't open up too much, but it was, it's just so cool how people are personal. But yeah. the IUL that I did with a 22 year old, was over uh, over FaceTime and he was super nice. He was super nice. I did it over FaceTime, first time ever doing that over the phone. And like, I just can't believe that it was an integrity deal. It wasn't a live transfer and it went through in 30 minutes, got him covered, showed him what the application looked like over the phone. So he knew that his information was secure. It was just so easy. I was like, man, I don't want to go nowhere else in integrity. Nowhere. <laughs> it's just, I did an IUL over the phone. Like, yeah. Yeah. amazing. Well, I mean, over the 22 year old, like, <laughs> wow. Well, your, your passion, your passion and wanting to help these people, clearly it's, it's very apparent. Everyone can feel that energy coming across. So <laughs> how do you, how do you take it when you run into a client that hangs up on you or doesn't want to talk or gives you the run around, doesn't buy. I mean, do you take it in stride the same way? I think it like, honestly, I watch Sean Mike a lot, right? And I yeah. like his persona. I like the way he like, kind of is like, well, you filled out this order. So I'm here to fill it out. I'm here to help you. Like I'm the type where I'll knock on your door. Even if you're like, you're avoiding me. I'll look through and I'll be like, I see you. I'll text you. I'll be like, I see you. They'll be like, I don't appreciate that. I'm like, well, I don't appreciate that I drove out three times and we set up an appointment and you keep ghosting me. Like, that's not very nice. Like, they're like, don't come back again. I'm like, okay, I'll pass it to my employee and they'll take it from here. Like, <laughs> we, we, we understand that you're afraid. We know that you're afraid to open up about your health conditions. You think it's a vulnerability, you're scared. We understand, we're not here to judge you. We're here to help you get qualified so that somebody in your family can get a, a certain amount of money. Like your health is valuable, health is wealth. So let's sit down, let's talk. I'm very, like I'll call people back. Like this lady told me, she we were on the phone. She's like, take me off your damn list. I was like, okay, you're getting off my fucking list. Boom. <laughs> calls me back three times i'm like well you just told me not to call you back now you're calling me back she said did you drop the f-bomb i was like did you drop the d-bomb because i'm just trying to get you some money she's like well i've applied several times and everyone keeps denying me i'm like well why are they denying you and so then we get into a conversation because i'm being myself and i'm just meeting them where they're at like you like to cuss maybe i like to cuss too like where you want to go with this 
And so then when people start seeing you're a real person, they're like, okay, well, what is this really? Like, what are you really doing? Are you a sales lady or are you, what do you do? And I'm like, no, I'm a field underwriter. And it's not easy, but I'm here for you as much as you want. I drive to people's houses. Like if they say their voicemail's full, I'll go knock on their door. And they'll be there and they'll be like, what is this? I'm like, oh, it's life insurance. They're like, oh, well, you know, honey, I'm, I have a lot of life insurance right now. And I'm like, okay, I'll hit them back in 90 days. There's some, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. I'm going to hit them back. And they'll be like, you know what? I don't think I have enough. And usually they don't. And I'll sit, sit with them at some point. I haven't really gotten that deep into it yet because I really just started taking it super serious this last month. But I do go out and reach out through email. I made a website. I didn't make a website to get like people to like get leads that way. But if I'm sitting with somebody, oh, oh that's how I did it. The first time I sat with a lead, um, it was a prosperity lead. And um, she was a very nice lady, very nice lady. She's been through a lot and she had a formal, like a face disconfiguration. So she didn't really want a lot of people to see her. So when she saw me, she, she opened up and she said, well, you know, I have a hard time sitting with people because my ex told me that once he ripped my nose ring out, no one ever wanted to look at me again. So I'm really grateful you came out and you met me where I'm at because my grandchildren can really value what done and put in place for my family. And that's when it really changed me. That, that moment really changed my life forever. That's really awesome. 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 So so I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Celine, Celine's a high energy person, which I remember the first, (laughs) first time I met you, Celine, that was at national convention. Yeah. Three three years ago now, I think. And then I I remember we had just started, you you followed me on social media and I followed you back. And and then I didn't really recognize you because on social media, you meet so many people and, you know, it's hard to tell who's who in person, but I remember you just came, you came straight up to me and you're like, I know you. And I was like, (laughs) you do you? And then, so, and then we started talking and then I'm like, Oh, okay. You're Celine. Okay. And now, now I got it. So then from that point, I'm like, yeah, Celine's not shy. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she's never going to be shy, but I, I got to ask, you know, with all these things, with all these techniques that you've, you've been talking about in terms of overcoming objections in terms of how, how you match their energy uh, in terms of how you, uh, you know, your, your persistence and door knocking and, and, and working a lead all the way through. Did you learn these through training or is this like your natural instinct? Well, when I, okay, so when I was younger, I grew up in church. So church, you kind of get used to people. Like, like I've been in very different denominations my whole life. Grew up Roman Catholic. Then I went to denominational because, non-denominational because my friends would invite me from school. And I'll, I'll really tell you right now, being a church goer, you're not afraid of people. You're not afraid to see people for who they are. You get really close to people. So after that, um, I met a green machine pest control up in Gilbert and I was really into Mormonism. So like I said, I've been through a lot of different uh, beliefs and understanding people. And I'm not afraid to dive deep into knowing what people think, how they think, why they think the way they think. And uh, this green machine pest control, I was door knocking and I made four sales just uh, showing up and being myself, my little quirky self and wanting to help people's families. So door knocking in that area and building somebody else's business there really helped me. And you know, what's really crazy is I knew family versus life was meant for me because when Andrew Taylor talks about being a bagger at fries, I was a bagger at fries at 18. And that's when I went into sales. So him sharing that was touched me very deeply. And so I felt like, wow, this is, this is my like family. This is like my soul tribe. This is every, so when I, when I approach you like that, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, uh, like, I'm just not afraid to introduce myself, to let myself be known and heard because I feel so connected to people that want to serve and high value, uh, integrity. What it is is because you're really owning everything you do. Like, if you have a charge back, you have to pay that back. And it's not a little bit of money, it's a lot of money. So you do have to have high energy and, and negotiation skills. And I don't really know where I learned it from. 
I think, you know, my dad always like going into houses and looking at house developments and him not telling me that he's the owner of these developments. And I'm saying hi to the realtors and I'm walking around all these new developments and seeing all these new people. And my dad is army. So I grew up with my dad being in the barracks. So I would grow up around soldiers and soldiers are not shy people. <laughs> right. They're trained to, uh, you know, be very tactical in your face. And, you know, I just grew up punching them. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm a friendly person. I'm just very personal. I love hugs. I love handshakes. I like meeting people face to face, you know, so I'll punch you in the face. As long as you can take my punches, you know, <laughs> we're good. Awesome. Well, I, I feel like I learned a lot about you today. You're good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I learned I learned a lot about you today. I mean, like you, you're a you're far more advanced than in terms of the, the sales development than I than I I knew. I knew that you would sell just because of your personality and you know you care about people. So I mean, I knew that would lead to some results. But some of the stuff that she's been talking about, yeah. I'm like, this is like advanced like next level type sales stuff. So absolutely, there are techniques in her, her sales approach. Yeah. yeah. It was really good. Thank too. you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm not perfect, but I definitely listen to the podcast and those help me so much. Like just opening my energy to what you guys say in your podcasts, it allows opportunities to come through me, like in that karmatic sense. And so this one guy we were sitting and just talking and he says, randomly he's like yeah i'm just getting hundred twenty thousand dollars don't know what to do with it i was like annuity i was like an annuity do you want to make sure it's tax sheltered so it doesn't get claimed as income and you don't got to pay a bunch of taxes on it he's like oh i never heard of that what is that and so uh after that you know uh he he was like yeah let's sit down and have a conversation about that you know yeah so real quick let me say since we're, we're, we are running out of time but if, if, you're, if there's an agent out there watching and they've been struggling, what advice would you give to them? Uh, clean out all your vices. If you're drinking heavy, you're partying heavy, you're hanging out with people a lot, you're smoking weed, um, even just cigarettes, just whatever is clogging your brain, get rid of it, drink water, set a morning routine, <clears throat> go to the gym, uh, build your confidence up, save your money, Cut on food expenses and invest in integrity and follow the routine, read the scripts, watch as many training videos, listen to the podcast when you're driving, set time apart in your brain to dedicate to understanding that it's a pattern. And when you complete the pattern, you're going to get results. Results will always follow when you dedicate your mentality to learning and achieving something out of what you're normally doing day to day. So if you're working a nine to five day to day, for, right when you get out of work, you're driving home, put on a podcast. You get home and that's the only time you have to go to the gym. You're in the gym, podcast time. All of that time should be podcast. Set your alarm clock early to get up early on your days off when you're not doing your nine to five so that when you do that part-time part in the, for the life insurance, You'll build up funding so then you can put your two weeks notice in. You put your two weeks notice in, you're making so much money in life insurance, you don't have to go back to your job. Now you're getting income because your routine now is, I know I'm gonna dial, I know I'm gonna buy leads, I know I'm gonna get paid. Now I don't have to depend on my nine to five. I depend on my integrity leads to get me through. And then bam, you got your system. I'm truly, I'm, I'm truly astonished by that. Well, how good of an answer that was. That was great. And one, one, la one last question for you, Celine. Uh, I love you. You, 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 met, you mentioned you, you, you love money, and you, you, and you're, and that's nothing, nothing to be ashamed about for that because we're a capitalist. Uh, but aside from money, what do you do this? For? Oh, for sure to be a better person. Oh my God, to be something that I, I love integrity. I mean, I talked about seven habits of highly effective people. And then coming across something called an integrity marketing group, I was just like, God, what? I mean, you know, like I, in my private life, places where I don't open up too much, I'm really trying to get away from that because I want to be known as a good family household name. I want to be known as somebody that, dang, she was like, she was like Drake with the money. She was giving money away. She was, <laughs> she put $500,000 to my granddaughter, like, 
I want to be the one that's like, she's a stakeholder, like she's a philanthropist. Like I looked up to Batman's mom and dad, how they changed the whole city. They rebuilt a city because they were philanthropists. And so being a life insurance broker, you're a philanthropist because you're giving people money for pennies on a dollar and you're telling them to live a healthier life, be more in control of your diet, be more in control of your spending, put your priorities first, live a better life. And that's philanthropy. And I'm so obsessed with knowing that there's people in this world that give to charities that take pride in you know, going to church and, and having these church events. And I just want to have one day have a nice house and invite people from all over the country to come over and have nice dinners, have festive events, throw parties and talk about our investment in our business and how we've changed people's lives. Like I love, I love the construction and the development. Oh, we lost her. Too much, had too much energy, but, um, <laughs> but, but she, she, she short circuited everything, but, <laughs> hey, but, right. I mean, but hope, hopefully that was like really helpful stuff for you guys. I mean, I, I'm truly, I'm truly uh, oh, impressed yeah, yeah, that was good. from, uh, I'm I mean, I've really enjoyed working with her recently, but then like, you know, I'd never heard her articulate her thoughts to the, to this extent. So, mm-hmm. um, we'll, we'll get her back on again soon and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it here and we'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk to her after, but Julian, thank you very much for coming on and sharing as always. Jamal, appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. My man. I appreciate it. John, you. thank you again for coming on. Bryce, for everyone that's on here, you know, let's take, let's go and take, let's take it. Let's try to bottle a portion of, of our that passion, of enthusiasm and passion. Yeah. And let's go out there and let, let's just go out and care about our clients, do what we can try to go the extra mile if we, if we can. And then just, let's just go out and protect as many people as we can. And if you do that, you have an opportunity to be able to achieve some of these grandiose goals that, that Celine's putting out there in the universe for everybody else. So let's go out there and be lead, guys. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys once again for supporting. If you guys want to see more of that, please make sure you like, subscribe, uh, click on this link here to subscribe. Click on this link for the next video.